Moments away, it'll be the Sacramento Kings going up against the Houston Rockets. Taking a look at the Rockets, they were undefeated against this squad last season, going 3-0. We'll see if they can continue that dominance. And there were rumblings about DeMarcus Cousins getting traded or wanting out last season. Ownership said they wouldn't trade him for anyone and put those rumors to rest. Listen, it would be impossible to get equal value for the cousin trade. He's not going anywhere. He's already a top center in the league and still very young. He just has to learn to get along with upper brass to win a championship. And you've heard it from upper brass. So uh, the center is the hardest position to fill. So at 25, would you trade a guy like Cousins? I don't think so. Unless you're getting like a top five player in the league that could change your franchise. I think he's there for a while. With the game just about ready to start, uh, let's go to Kevin Harlan, Kev. The State Capitol building aglow in the night air of Sacramento, California. On the road looking for a win against a Western Conference rival, the Houston Rockets are getting ready for this thing to get started. 2K Sports is proud to present NBA Basketball. This is Kevin Harlan with Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony, and on the sideline tonight, Doris Burke. This game in Sacramento marks the start of a homestand for the Kings. It has not been a dramatic change this season to the performance last year in terms of the record, guys. Every game, though, a, a chance to get better as a team. And I think for Sacramento, they were a team that no one knew quite what to make of entering the season. But as the year's gone on, it's become clear they're legit contenders. Abundantly clear. I mean, they can compete with any team in the league, and I think they still have some upside, room for improvement. Now a chance, courtesy of Gatorade, all fueled up and ready to go. The starting five on the floor. Taking a look at the Rockets, Harden and Ariza filling out the perimeter. Then there's Beasley, and it's Capella in at the five spot. Yeah, the Rockets were able to make it to the second spot in the West at the very end of the season. Actually came down to the last day. They could have ended as low as six going into the final games. Here's Carly Stein. James Harden picking up that last basket. And that one's good, Shumpert. Yeah, poor job defensively, giving him such a clear look at the basket from three-point range. And let's get this update now from Doris Burke, who's across the way on the sideline. Yes, Kevin, I was able to catch up with the head coach for the Rockets just a moment ago. He told me he's wary about how they'll contend with DeMarcus Cousins inside. He said he's a beast in there, no doubt about it. Size, length, strength, and a ton of skill. The talent is really off the charts with him. And guys, he knows it won't be easy to muscle Cousins away from the rim, but he said that's what they've got to find a way to do. It won't be easy. All right, Doris, thank you very much. Now there's something for the top ten highlight reel right there. A layup can be just as sweet and as pretty as a dunk sometimes. 17-foot shot on the way. And again, it's Sacramento converting. Lights out here, right out of the gate. Perfect 4-4 from the floor. And it's Beasley in the corner. Back to Harden. 11 feet away. Shot is off. So the Kings will take it the other way. They come into this having outplayed Phoenix the last game. And Kevin, you know, they showed how important it is to have a strong bench. I mean, when you are on the road, that depth is final. I think they really utilized the second unit to extend their offensive assault and just really wore down their opponent. And guys, I think what you saw from them throughout the game was teamwork. This is a team. Regardless of who was out there on the floor at any given time, they got it done. And that has to make you feel good as a group. Shumpert, no good. Rockets trail by five. And last year's midseason trade had to feel good to Yaman Shumpert. Toiling away in New York, injured, uninspired. Boy, did he find new life in Cleveland. Uh, of course, playing next to LeBron can do that for you. Here's Carly Stein following the score by Houston. Wow, wow, he got whacked on that, which shouldn't be much debate there. Blatant contact, straightforward call, simple. The Kings shooting their first free throws of the game. And if we want to take a look back, they converted about 76% from the line. 
And, you know, that just added to their confidence at the offensive end. I mean, knowing that free throw shooting was something they didn't have to worry about gave them a lot of confidence to play freely. Second free throw, no good. The Rockets have gone 4 of 7 from the field, shooting over 50%. Regioni kicks to Harden. Wants to get it to Ariza and does. He dishes it to Prigioni. Just five on the clock. From beyond the arc. Rebound by the Kings. And for Shepard last year, Clark, he added the defense and athleticism on the wing that Cleveland so desperately needed. Yeah, he sure did, Kevin. And he also became a facilitator of all things. I mean, you wouldn't expect that from him, but he averaged over three assists a game. Easily the best mark of his career. Good point. Harden's shot is off. He's not necessarily a strong inside presence, but he needs to polish those chances off. Last game for Houston, they picked up the win against the Magic. They just weren't challenged. I mean, nearly as much as they should have been in that game, at least when they had the ball. Yeah, it was a mismatch. I mean, the defense from the start was on its heels practically the entire game. No good from Beasley. You, you almost have to assume he's going to knock those down when he is that open. Shumper, no good. The shooting numbers just aren't there yet in the quarter. That's good from Ariza on the assist by Harden. Ariza's got his first two points of the night. That was some slick passing from Harden on that one. It was a rough year last year for fans in Sacramento, but they still come out here to fill up the stands, Greg, even with their team struggling. Yeah, the, the new ownership give them credit. Last year, the Kings marked an eight-year high in terms of attendance. Mm. Not bad for a team that, that really looked to be in the hunt for the postseason, but then just fell apart midway through. And it's a completely new group on the floor for the Kings. 146 left to play in the first quarter. Inside. And it's Houston on the break. Who are with the ball? Here's McDaniels. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot. He'll shoot two. Taking a look here at the numbers for Derrick Rose. Some last season stats for him. Average 17 points a game. Five assists and three rebounds. He has been terrific throughout. Putting up some huge numbers offensively. Yeah, you know, you just plug him in. He's a flat-out scoring machine. When you plug him up, let him go. And he can't get the first one. The Kings ended at 18 and 23 here at home. Not a terrible record for them given how their whole season went kind of up and down and inconsistent. They even had some home cooking in their favor as they were the second best team in free throw differential at home. And he's good on the second. Well, a big thing for the Kings to look forward to is the opening of their new arena. They are still looking at opening the downtown arena in the fall of 2016, and Sacramento couldn't be any more excited. It's good on the putback. And a nice, soft touch on the board. And, you know, when you have that gentle a touch, those tip-ins are easy to come by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but how about the fight there prior to that ball being available? That's what I like and, and what you need to really focus on when they have plays like that. It's deflected. Now here's McLemore, covered by Brewer. Takes a three, and another three for Sacramento. They've been hot here early, dropping them in left and right. Rolling, rolling, rolling. We'll see how long they can keep it going. Dishes it to McDaniels. Teardrop shot. Kufis with the block. And right from the start, Kevin, they've been pounding the glass. Most of those 50-50 balls also going their way. Well, I don't think there's any question about it. They came focused and ready to play. I mean, they're doing everything they can to um, put things in their favor. You earn that, and they're actually earning it well right now. Here's Brewer. Aaron Afalo picking up that last basket, but they get it back. The dish to Brewer. Houston moving the ball around. McDaniels kicks to Beverly. And he sinks the shot coming off the strong pick. 
You can't afford to get him that kind of a look. Well, you know, he came off a good screen, but still, as a defender, you've got to do a better job of fighting over and through that. And here's a follow for three. Here's Beverly. McDaniels passes to Q. Can't connect from 14 feet out. Offense, the order of the day as the first quarter comes to a close. Kings lead by eight. Live from Sacramento, you're watching 2K Sports. Just getting set to start. And when you consider how the Kings are doing, guys, what are your thoughts? How good has the ball movement been here? Just absolutely terrific. Boy, that kind of timely passing, Greg, really fun to watch. Sacramento leading by eight. We've got Marcus Morris. Amon Shumpert is out there with McCray. Then there's Cauley Stein. And it's Cousins in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. That's the five out there for the Kings. Really crisp, intelligent passing to make that basket possible. And Marcus Morris is nicknamed Mook. He has a twin brother, older by seven minutes, named Markeith. Both brothers played at Kansas, drafted 13th and 14th in the same year. He eventually played for the same pro team. That is joined at the hip. Here's Morris. James Harden picking up that last basket. Oh, and a fast break for the Rockets. That's good for Marisa on the assist by Beverly. They are just killing them on the interior. Yeah, you can't say that with enough emphasis. I mean, the defenders are just not being aggressive enough down low. you got to play with some physicality in the paint. Rockets trail by six. Ariza kicks to Beasley. Pass to Beverly. And it's Ariza in the corner. Lock at six. Here's Harden on the wing. From outside the arc, count that as his fourth basket of the night. Just seven shots to get there. Kings leading now by three. McCray passes to Morris. He trains the quick shot. Morris has got six points. That's their third straight make off an assist. <laughs> Great ball movement. And Houston calls their first time out of the game. And, and the Rockets were a tough team last year, but, but at times it, it really felt like a one-man show. Harden carried them so much for so long. You, you just have to wonder if it wore him out. Doris Burke has some information for us. Doris? Yes, guys. Over that break, I was able to catch the message Houston's coach was giving to his team. He said their plan was run their offense through James Harden. Coach has a lot of faith in him offensively and let his players know it, insisting that he be at the forefront of what they do at that end of the court from here on out. Maybe making those early adjustments will give them time to judge their effectiveness by halftime. We'll soon find out, Kevin. Thanks again, Doris. And if carrying the team during the regular season or hardened down, Greg, you're talking about, it didn't show that much in the playoffs. Harden was phenomenal most, if not Clark, all of the postseason. I would agree with you, but there also were some other guys for Houston that did step up in the postseason. Howard looked as good as he did before all of his injuries as a case in point. Kings were off to a hot start last year, but things certainly fell apart midway. A big factor in that was the messy firing of their coach, Mike Malone. Yeah, really, that firing came out of nowhere to the fans and the players and seemed odd to fire a coach that has been leading his team to good basketball. He kicks to Beasley. Beasley the screen. Ariza outside. This one for three. Rebound by the Kings. Cousins has got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. And, you know, we'll never really know the full details of why Malone was fired, but, but the effect it had on the team was easy to see. Kings really tailspanned out of control afterwards. 
And a chance to catch up on some numbers here. The hustle stats for the Rockets. They've come out in attack mode on the defensive end. They've applied pressure and forcing turnovers. Something else they've done right so far from the get-go tonight is, is run. I mean, so much of their offense has come off the fast break. McLemore is checked in for Sacramento. For Sacramento, they've gone two or four shooting the ball here in the second. You know, the Kings, I think, will look back and realize they made a dubious decision the way they handled that coaching change. I mean, lucky for them, they were able to right things, so to speak, by landing George Carl later on. Clearly one of the better coaches in NBA history. That's his second personal foul. If he gets another, it probably puts him on the bench for the rest of the first half. Sacramento on defense. They've led by as much as 10. Really, this isn't going to get it done for them here. I mean, they're pressing too hard. You can see it. They're tight. They're forcing it. You've got to stay within yourself. They're trying to get the three-point game going, but they're trying too hard, and it's backfiring on them. Now, here's Ariza. He picked up 12 points in their last win against Orlando. You know, he's had better starts, obviously, but he's shaking it off here in the second. Here's McCray, screened by Cousins. He got an advantage there off the pick and took it right in. Morris has got eight points. The second he got around the pick and shook his man, it was straight to the bucket for the easy dude. Very, very well done. Regione, that's a two-pointer. Morris with the rebound. Not really sure what he was thinking about on that shot. That is not high IQ basketball. Not at all. I mean, he shouldn't even have considered taking that shot. Just a poor, poor choice there. Harden kicks to Prigioni. Ariza has the open look. No good with the triple. The Kings leading. And guys, before last season, Trevor Ariza signing a four-year, $32 million deal with the Rockets. Big free agent get for the team. And, you know, they wanted to re-sign Chandler Parsons, Kevin, but with his departure, in comes Ariza, and Trevor is a quality replacement. I mean, a terrific wing defender, and he's a nice spot-up shooter as well. Down low, and stolen by Cousins. Tries it from nine. He clangs that one off the back iron, and down it falls. McLemore's got his first two points of the night. Rockets trail by three. And, you know, you compare their games. Ariza a bit more limited, maybe, offensively than Parsons, a few years older. But he's also a better defender and, and also better at playing without the basketball. Remember, you got five guys out there, only one ball. Sometimes your chemistry can improve when a guy doesn't need the basketball to be effective. That is good. 104 left in the first half. To the middle. And Harden with the basket on the assist by Frigioni. 13 points for James Harden. Yeah, they've raised their shooting percentage in this quarter, and they're starting to get on track. And they're starting to heat up is what they're doing. They're on fire. I mean, that's what they need to climb back into this game. And, you know, for the Rockets, a nice pairing with, with James Harden and, and Trevor Ariza. Ariza, a spot-up shooter and defender, while Harden arguably the premier offensive creator in the league. I mean, they really complement each other well. He shot the ball exceptionally well as they've built this lead for themselves here. McCray passes to Cauley Stump. Now here's McLemore outside. That ball is in the basket. Now he's shot six and made three of them. And, and he has really come to life here after a slow start in that first quarter. It's Harden with the drive. Beasley dishes to Prigioni. Wide open. The offensive rebound. And here we go. Fast break. McLemore has got it. And off the left side of the rim, and it swirls in for him. McLemore has got 10. This is a tremendous solo run he's on. I mean, the kind we've seen him have so many times before. And so it's a close game as we wrap up the first half of basketball. It's Sacramento up by four. And a chance now to send you over to Doris Burke standing by on the sideline. Doris? Well, James, an impressive first half for you. What allowed you to come out so strong? Uh, just uh, trying to be aggressive, trying to, trying to get out early and uh, give a little spark to my teammates. Um, you know, and, and they followed along. So, you know, it's just a matter of us and not turning the ball over and getting stops. You're not a bad guy to follow, James. Thank you so much. Over to you guys. 
Thank you, Doris. And we'll be right back after halftime for the start of quarter number three. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hello again, everybody. I'm Ernie Johnson, joined by Shaquille O'Neal and Kenny the Jet Smith, and it's the NBA Halftime Show on 2K Sports. Sacramento came out looking very confident. They put together some nice offensive stretches and at one point led by as many as 10. After one, they held an eight-point advantage. Going into the second quarter, they lost a little focus, sacrificed some points, but still finished with a four-point cushion at the half. What'd you think about Sacramento, Kenny? Well, they're playing some unselfish basketball here tonight, Ernie. Guys aren't trying to take the defense one on five. They're moving the basketball and finding the open man. And then, of course, the open man is finishing. So no problem here tonight. Shaq, how'd you think the Rockets were playing? The big positive, I think their points are in the paint. They were determined to work the ball inside of Ernie. It worked. It's always worked. I got four rings. I know it works for a fact. That's why they call me Dr. O'Neill, because I'm a master at being dominant on the inside. Anyway, you got to keep that going, because that will continue to open things up for them on the perimeter. And that'll do it for now as we send you back to Kevin Harlan for the start of the second half. And now the start of the second half. Neither side jumping out ahead through the first two quarters. Harden doing it all. 13 points and several assists. Kings leading now by four. So on the floor for Houston. Harden and Ariza filling out the perimeter. Then there's Beasley. And it's Prigioni in at the point guard position. And for Houston, they're shooting in this game 45%. Beasley outside. Will not go. This is off the front eye. It's no secret, Clark, what this Houston Rockets team wants to do. They want to get to the line, drive the lane, and hurt you from outside the arc. And they'll do it all at a very fast pace. I mean, they're fun to watch. The pace is something that I think sneaks up on teams mm -hmm. sometimes, Kevin. Good point. Here is Harden, following the basket by DeMarcus Cousins. Harden kicks to Capella. And the bucket counts, and he's on his way to the free throw line. Try to make it a three-point play. Guys, he's got the length to get to the rim, and when he gets there, you never see a clumsy or awkward finish out of him. Everything is smooth and fluid. This will be his third free throw shot of the game. And, and not the guy you want to see at the line too often. Season numbers has him in the bottom tier of the league. You know, yeah, guys, last year was a rough one for him at the stripe. I mean... It's going to be hard for him not to improve on those numbers. They were that bad. Now, here is Morris. Eight points for him. Regioni kicks to Capella. Capella controls the rebound and puts it back up and in. Capella's got five. Relentless on the glass is what he is, and that tip-in was the result of all the hard work he puts in down low. Yeah, it looks like he saw some things out there that, that need to be adjusted. And he's going to take a break here and talk it over. Hey, you know, coaches sometimes need a break in the action to rethink and retool a bit. 
Anytime you, you're in that situation, it makes sense to use the timeout. Timeout called by the Kings. And this is the first season matchup for them against this Rockets team. Yeah, and this game kicks off a four-game season series between the two teams. Two conference foes, guys, looking to take game one tonight. Yeah, very interesting to see who can land the first blow. A platoon swap here for Sacramento. Sacramento's gone four of eight tonight from three-point land, shooting 50% on the free ball here. Heinrich kicks to Vujicic. Pulls up. No good on the shot. A bit long that time. Well, I think he had all the space he needed. He just couldn't find the bottom of the net. In the corner, Harden. No good. That would have tied it. He's got to be disappointed with himself on that one. He has got to knock those down. Papagiani guarded by Harden. Here's Vujicic. Sacramento again missing. One for four from the field since halftime. They're having a tough time getting it going here. It's Ariza on the wing. Covered by Vujicic. This is it to Prigioni. To tie. And he gets it to go. Prigioni's got 12. And he came off that screen, and the D just didn't get over the top of it. Yep, weren't there in time enough to challenge, Greg. And when that's the case, you can mark those up for him. They grabbed their own miss. Papagini. And that's good. A nice job in the glass as they pick up two on the second effort. And the rebound and the follow show you what he is all about. Gritty and determined with the soft touch to match. A reason or what? Sacramento's gone 0-2 from deep to start things here in the second half. And for Costa Kufis, Clark, so far he hasn't had that breakout year. He has been kind of in the shadow of Mark Gasol on that front line for Memphis. Yeah, but he's understood his role and he's done a nice job. He did start 81 games for Denver a few seasons ago, Kevin. But I think he's very comfortable as a backup. He's one of those guys who's just effective in limited playing stance. Beasley with a clean look. Kufis grabs the miss. Kufus has got three rebounds now in this one. Heinrich kicks to Kufus. Feeds to Vujicic. Three-pointer. Another three for Sacramento. And, and talking about Kufus, he gives you some things you want out of your bigs. Great size and activity. Solid rebounds and blocks per minute numbers. He may just need a chance in the right system to show more game. Here's Vujicic. Following the score by Trevor Ariza. And he's having quite the quarter, converting at a really high percentage. There's the pass to Harden. To the paint. Here's Beasley. Good. It's Harden with the assist that time. Harden's got five assists tonight. And, you know, getting back to Kufus, one thing he has to get better at is finishing through contact. He has a really nice touch around the basket, but sometimes contact negates that. Rockets trail by six. Harden with it. He's picked up by Heinrich. Harden the pass to Ariza. Out to the right wing. Fires from deep. Harden can't hit. Sacramento's gone two of five with a three-point shot since coming out of the break. And again, it's Sacramento converted. How many times have we seen a possession like that from them today? Ending with a basket coming off a pretty pass. Well, when you look at the assist totals, heck, they've been clearly the better team. Well, last season, Greg, another year without playoff basketball in Sacramento. Ashamed to see some of the best fans in the NBA not be a part of the postseason. It's a great point, Kevin. Now, nine straight years where the Kings have failed to make the postseason. 29 win seasons aren't going to get you very far when you're battling in the West. Now a timeout called by Houston. And, you know, you mentioned the nine straight years without a playoff appearance for the Kings. Their last trip was in 2006. And since then, they've been rebuilding. That's the second longest playoff drought in the NBA. Houston, a whole new five on the floor. We've got 123 left to play in the third. Houston moving the ball around. Scooped up. And he thought he had a clear path to the hoop, but the defense didn't give up on that play and cut him off. And that one's good. And the Kings lead by 10. 
Boy, they've gone on this run, and ball movement has been a big key. It really has, Clark. The defense unable to react as quickly as necessary in terms of dealing with their passing. Now, here's Brewer. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. And he gets it to go. Well, if the Kings do make it back to the playoffs, you know they'll be dangerous. Their fans have been through so much the last few seasons. They really deserve to see a team in postseason contention. We'll see if they want to trade two for one here. Got to time up that clock to do so. Here's Beverly, and he hits the jumper for two. Looked like he was trying to go for a degree of difficulty points on that shot. Kings leading now by six. Morris right side. Yes, and it's Rose with the assist that time. Morris has got 11 points. And that's another assist for a team that is putting on a clinic on how to share the ball. And I love the mentality that they've had. If a shot isn't there, they're not forcing it. They're moving it side to side until they finally get the one they want. And Brewer kicks to Beverly. Over in the corner, McDaniels. Off target. And as we end the third quarter, a great game. Both teams playing well. Kings lead by nine. And fourth quarter basketball will be coming your way on 2K Sports right after this. back as we get set to start the fourth. Here is Harden. We've got McCray. Holly Stein is out there with McLemore. Then there's Kufus and it's Shumpert in at the two-guard spot. That's the five out there for the King. Here's McCray. Shoots it. Now a timeout called by Sacramento. All right, Sacramento. Please welcome Boy, last year the Rockets dealt with a lot of injuries. I mean, the front court and post players were hit the hardest. I think almost every Rocket big would end up missing some time. Houston making a switch here. Capella's checked in. It's picked off. Now in transition is Brewer. Here we go. No good. And it's the Kings taking it the other way. Following this one, they get to host the Warriors. Count the buckle. And their solid play in the paint continues, guys. And that's been their focus, it seems, throughout the game. I like the discipline that they've showed in terms of creating those opportunities on the inside. Beverly wide open. It's hauled in by the Kings. Out to the wing. Here's McLemore. Sacramento gets it back. And the basket good. Almost uncontested. I mean, it's nice to be able to add to the lead without having to really work for it. Inside. It's deflected and stolen by Kufus. And here we go. From 20 feet out, misses off the left iron. And if the shot's not there, you've got to understand that move the basketball. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not quite sure what his mindset or what he was thinking there. I mean, that was just a terrible shot. And with that shot, the Sacramento lead has cut to just 11 points in the basket from Capella. That's his second personal foul. For the Rockets, Michael Beasley, he's checked in for Thunder. And Trevor Ariza has subbed in for Brewer. And a moment to look at the scoring approach in terms of where the points are coming from for the Kings. Guys, the passing we've seen from them has been tremendous. Very unselfish. And also, their second chance points have been a story all night as well. But that's just pure effort and hustle. Rockets trail by 10. And Beverly gets to Ariza. 
back to Beverly. And fouled hard that time. He'll get to the line and shoot two. And continuing to expand his arsenal last season, Patrick Beverly, the guard for the Rockets. Career highs in assists and rebounds per game, and he's one of the smallest guys on the floor. Yeah, and, and he's really working on the details of becoming a better playmaker, becoming a guy that has coaches trust him to handle the basketball in those crucial situations. Good on the second free throw. You know, talking about Beverly, his wrist injury really changed things for the Rockets at the end of last season. Suddenly, 37-year-old Jason Terry had to take on big minutes at the point, and he was serviceable, but they missed Beverly's toughness on defense particularly. Now a timeout called by Houston. And going back to the one thing with Patrick Beverly, his shot could still be more consistent. Last year, he was down in shooting averages across the board, including just 38% from the field. It makes it very difficult on your offense when you have an inability to space the floor. Doris Burke has an update for us. Doris? Hey, Kevin. Well, the Rockets coach had some advice for the team over that last break. He was emphatic. We're not getting it done, fellas. We've simply got to step up, get engaged, and try to battle back. Guys, we'll see if the pep talk gets him going. No doubt about it. He has done a ton to help his team, but he's going to have to do even more if they want to have a chance to get back in this. Rockets trail by nine. It's a floater, and the defense didn't have position. They whistle a blocking foul, and he'll go to the line. It's going to go on Willie Colley Stein. And the second player taken in the 2008 draft, Michael Beasley out of Kansas State, has been the ultimate wild card. Incredibly high expectations for him. At one time, he was the best high school player in the country, but now, you know, Greg, in his eighth season, bounced around a little bit. You wonder if he will ever fulfill that great potential. You know, you could argue he's the best player in college that one year yes. at Kansas yes. State. I mean, unstoppable score and, and rebounder on the collegiate level, and, and he's shown flashes, but that's the one thing about this level. So much of the game is mental, and not everybody's equipped to handle the responsibility of being a great player. Excellent point. And thinking about Michael Beasley's career now, he did have a breakout season in 10 and 11 with the Timberwolves. It was enough to land him a three-year, $18 million contract with the Suns a couple of years ago. Arrow seemed to be pointing up, but then things headed south quickly. Another miss by Houston. Well, he had one three-pointer in the first half, but so far in the second, he's come up with goose eggs. And the shot no good from McCray. And just because you can make it from outside doesn't mean you need to live there. Not that far out anyway, Greg. I mean, he can work for a better shot than that. Now that one in the Sacramento lead has been cut down to just six points with the basket from Beverly. And for last season, it was really just a victory for Beasley to get back in the league. I mean, did not start the season on any team. No doubt he has the skills, but something needs to happen for him in order to stick. We've played just over three and a half minutes now in the fourth quarter. It's Harden with the drive. Somehow ignores the tight D and gets the way up. How about the way he's able to angle his body to shield the big fella off and still get the finish? You've got to be clever with your sleight of hand when you get inside and try to finish against the bigger guys. He made it, he, he made it look easy that time. You know, that's hard to explain that. Play. I mean, I, I guess he thought he had more room than he did. Sacramento making some changes. Cousins comes in for Kufus, and Morris subbed in for Aaron Aflalo. And a switch here also for Houston. Regioni's checked in. Rockets trail by six. Harden with it. Now guarded by Shumpert. Capella with the bucket. Capella's got nine points now in just the second half. Really not hard to see why they're giving up points on this run. I mean, they've just given them too many looks inside. Yeah, and usually when a team goes on a run like this, it's because they are getting too many opportunities on the inside. Make them beat you from deep. Now a timeout called by Houston. They're behind by seven. There's a minute 47 left in the fourth quarter. 
And you know what? I think he thinks he can make a few improvements to how things are going on right now. Yeah, and you know, coaches always are looking for ways to tweak things and change it up a little bit, no matter what the situation is. That's what coaches do. There's a minute 47 left in the fourth quarter. Harden gets to a reason. From outside, off the mark. I'll tell you what, you can shake your confidence missing wide open shots like that. Here's McCray. Soft touch off the glass. And it's a nine point Kings lead. Good ball movement. He put that pass in the ideal spot, right where it needed to be. Now a timeout called by Houston. They're trailing by nine. 132 left in the game. To the left wing. One twenty-seven left here in the fourth quarter. Vigioni can't hit. Sacramento leading by nine. And here we go with Morris running it up the court. Now that's how to finish the break. Throw down with force. And I like how he puts himself in position there to finish on the break. Yeah, you know that's what we call seeing and feeling the game. Excellent read of how that play was going to develop and where the ball was going. That's stuff that you oftentimes can't teach, Greg. Guys, I think this is a game they have to feel good about as we wind through the final moments here in what looks to be a solid win for Sacramento. The sheer volume of three-pointers was the deciding factor tonight at seems. Yeah, they sink one, Kevin, and then they do it again. It worked. And ever win important, and this one will go down as win number three. And they'll take the win tonight, setting the tone in the first matchup of this four-game season series. And it will be a fight, Greg. When you see an opponent that many times, it's inevitable that those games take on a little extra added meaning for the player. Just a quality win, and, and you look at the box score and some really good numbers for Cauley Stein. He just looked like an orchestrator out there. His teammates kept running to the open spot, and he found them time and time again. Prigioni kicks to Ariza. The feed to Harden. Pass to Prigioni to stop the run. And there's the whistle. Fouled hard on the shot. He'll go to the line. That's his second personal foul. Shooter for Sacramento. The first one's false. Gioni hits them both. Nine seconds left here in the fourth quarter. From deep. The shot is off. The 2K Sports Post Game Show. Thanks, Kevin, and let's take a look now as we give the nod to our Jordan player of the game. He's not always known to make the big headlines or get a lot of media attention, but he does make the big plays, and he made them throughout this one. Well, he certainly pulled his weight in the rebound department. His energy and his positioning were fantastic. Forget about everything else he did. His work on the glass alone had a big impact tonight. He had point guard numbers tonight, racking up those eight assists. 
It was a really unselfish performance. He kept the D guessing all night. You could never get comfortable with him trying to figure out whether he was going to take it for himself or set up a teammate. And that'll do it for our broadcast tonight. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, for me and, and Kenny Smith and Shaquille O'Neal and Kevin Harlan and the entire 2K Sports crew, have a wonderful evening.